Hi everyone, Sandy Lene here. On October 17, 2015, the paranormal investigative team that I am part of, Thin Veil Investigators, gave a Halloween tour at the historic and haunted St. Charles Hotel in Carson City, Nevada. The Thin Veilers that hosted and attended this Halloween event are Carolyn Burton, Jack Albano, Carol Clemens, and me, Sandy Lene. We had some awesome items available for purchase, such as my Dig House book and my Ode to a Ghost poetry book, Lynn Burton's beautiful handmade dowsing rods for spirit communications, and Kim Van Zyl's fabulous Entangle Pumpkins. It appears the spirits like this art form too. The guests start to arrive and it looks as though the spirits are arriving as well. Looking over my notes, let's begin the lecture part of the Halloween tour. Well, welcome. We are Thin Veil Investigators. I am Sandy Lene, and this is Jack Albano. And right Hi. here in this gorgeous hat <laughs> is Carolyn. And the lady that let you in that will be back up here, her name is Carolyn. And we have been a team since um, November 19th, 2005. Laura was having our 10 year old birthday here. And we have investigated all sorts of things. Now, we are, we boast that we are a very unique team because we all have psychic or sensitive abilities, each and every one of us, okay? Um, I happen to have the ability where I'm called what they term a clairsentient. I, I smell, I hear, I see, I, I see the dead people. I, it's really cool. And then also, we have team members are what we call physical sensitives like Carolyn, okay? What she does, she'll get headaches or she'll get sick to her stomach when spirits are around, okay? Now also too, um, we have members We've had members that we call audio sensitive. They'll hear, you know, they'll hear spirits talking or moving around before maybe even sometimes we see them. Oh, that hurt. Yeah, it did. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then we also have members that we call environmental sensitive because they just feel the spirits right off the bat. They may not be able to see them or hear them. It's just they know they're there. So it's really cool. Now, we do use electronics. This small things, cameras, uh, K2 meters, things like that. But basically, we are really boast that we are just a um, low tech. We use our abilities. And we also use simple things. Ghosts love to move things. They like to move pieces of candy, strings, toys. Whenever we go somewhere where there's uh, kids that we know that there's a lot of kids, hospital or orphanage or something, we leave them toys and it's really cool. They, they move the toys. Pencils, playing cards, puff balls. That's what we use. Because Pinball Investigators is a team where we go in to, act, to communicate only. That's it. We don't go in for, well, we just don't go in for a lot of things that many other teams might be looking for. 
We want to find out who is in the building. What we do is re we research the history before we go in. We research the history while we're talking to spirits. It's amazing what they can tell you. And then after what they've told us, we will research for some more. It's really cool because sometimes, uh, you know, a ghost of Grandpa Jones will say, well, in the year 1822, this happened. And it's like, I've never heard that before. So we go research it, and there it is, 19, or 1822, he told us that. So spirits, we communicate with them to learn uh, uh, history. We communicate with them too, especially when we go into people's homes, because they want to know who's in their house. We don't get rid of them. They just want to set, find out who it is so they can set a dinner plate for them. Okay? Have a nice conversation about the ghosts in their house. A lot of people really want to know what spirit is living in their home so they can talk about it you know, and enjoy. Spirits love TV, especially the old. Well, less people, they never had TV. They really enjoy it. Is it okay to ask questions? You bet. They don't mind being showed off? A lot of them, no. No one will tell you why. It's because um, a lot of my clientele are people that come to me, they want to talk to their loved ones that have crossed over. And so they like to be recognized and acknowledged, just like you do now. It was Cindy's birthday. That was cool. Yeah. Okay. Spirits love to be um, known that they are in a building, that they are respected still, they are known still. A lot of people, they'll have birthdays, you know, for their families, loved ones. And believe me, when a lot of them that have crossed over, they don't go anywhere. They stay right here making sure you're doing what they want you to do. <laughs> it's really cool. Yeah. Okay, I have a question. Uh -huh. I always try to send things to the light, but sometimes they don't want to go because they like where they're at. Right. Is that a, a normal thing? Uh-huh. Yeah. It, especially like with family members, they just they're enjoying what they're doing here and they just don't they don't need to go over yet. You know? They'll go over when all their family's over there. Or two, they just like it here. I don't really want to get into, you know, like unfinished business, you know, things like that. That's that's really getting into a areas that I would be standing here taking up your time all night. But a lot of them they just like still being here. Many times, many times when I'm looking um, for a spirit because somebody wants to communicate with their loved one. They still want a beer, they still want a cigarette, they still want sex, they still want their clothing, they still want to be around their animal, they still want dinner. A lot of them that have crossed over still have their earthly, I don't know, um, the desires is a good word, yeah. It's really amazing. So we do, there's been times we leave them a little shot of whiskey or cigarette or a hamburger. Of course they don't have anything to do with it, kind of sits there and, you know, kind of rots away, but it's the intent, okay? There's a, a fellow up at the St. Uh, St. Mary's Hospital up in Virginia City, and he loves apples. And so every time I go up there, I bring him an apple. I know he can't eat it, but he remembers. And that's cool. All right. Now, we bailers have investigated and documented many places in our ten years, including this wonderful building. <laughs> And we have incredible pictures, footage, oh my gosh, and EVP, which is electronic, uh, electronic voice phenomena. We have that ranging in the upper thousands from everywhere that we've been. Um, now, one thing though, have you all got your goodie bags? Okay. Because we are very old school um, investigators. We are sticklers for being protected no matter where you go. You never know what spirits are going to do. A lot of them are like Casper. Some of them aren't, okay? And so in your package there, you will see a little tiny package about that big, and it's got a protective stone in it for you. Okay, they're all different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have blessed them to make sure that you will be safe. And of course, I put white lights around anybody that comes on any of our tours. Make sure that you're safe, okay? And you can take that stone with you, wear your bra, put it in your pocket, uh, put it in your purse, by your bedside at night, and you can um, take it with you on any other ghost hunt that you go on because it's a protective talisman. Okay? Yeah. Can you? All right. Okay, now about the St. Charles Hotel. This hotel was built in 1862. And it holds the esteemed honor of being the oldest holstery, that's an old-fashioned word, in Nevada. Now, 
The two people that built this, George Remington and Albert Mueller, had the foresight that Carson City was going to be the capital. And that's why they chose this site to build the hotel right here. Now, okay, let me see, where are we at? Okay, actually it was two hotels at one time. What you're standing in was actually the Mueller Hotel, okay? And then the, on the other side of this wall is three stories. That was the St. Charles Hotel, okay? Well, in 1896, a man by the name of Briggs, he cut open that hallway right there, combined the two, and then it became the Briggs House. And then it went, this poor building suffered through six names before in the 1990s, it finally was returned back to the St. Charles Hotel. All right, now, um, <laughs> let's see. Oh, it was called the Riggs House, the Golden West Hotel in 1910, the Travelers Hotel in 1928, Page Hotel in 1946, Pony Express Hotel in 1953. And it was gotten to the point, you can see in my books here, that it deteriorated to, this was ghetto city here for 40 years. This was a hovel. It was sad. This once most elegant hotel in Nevada turned into, I mean, just, it was horrible. You can see some pictures in my book here. It's just, it's just horrible what happened. In it. But the whole entire neighborhood, you know, was horrible. So uh, in 1993, Bob McFadden bought, remodeled, and changed back the name to the St. Charles Hotel. And he was pivotal in getting the rest of the neighborhood, too, to get that back up to par, because it was in bad shape over here, especially right across the street from the legislature. I mean, ooh, not good. So then he spent 10 years refurbishing it, and then he sold it in 2004 to the Lopicolos that own it now. They're real estate agents, and they bought it. And as fate would have it, three weeks later, Bob McFadden died. Isn't that funny? But all that time into this for 10 years, <clears throat> he went goodbye. Now, um, what really was pivotal to the outside especially was Furkin and Fox. The construction began in 2007, and what they had to do, it's very, very interesting to watch this, they had to lift up this building. And when they did that, oh my gosh, you wouldn't believe the, I mean, cracks. They weren't just little fissures, they were cracks that had to be fixed in here. It was like, oh my gosh, this poor building. But now it's pretty well stable, and it's beautiful, thanks to Firkin and Fox, because they really did remodel and make the outside look cool. All right. Now, nothing bad ever happened in this hotel, because it was um, created as an elegant hotel. So there were celebrities, there was legislatures, there was the elite that stayed here. Okay, does it mean that there can't be some trespassers? Because <laughs> there is. <laughs> All right. Now, um, let's see. The spirit, okay, the spirits that are still remaining in this hotel, okay, we have got a man by the name of Phil. He's the top left picture here. Now, he used to be in this room at the end of the hallway, but that's rented out now. And he was very interesting because he hated women. And so if you went into his room, he would pull your hair. He was kind of a big poo head. <laughs> and then um, in the bottom left-hand corner, his name was Guy. And we can't get into his room. His room's locked now. It's kind of a mess. But he was real proud of his room had Egyptian murals painted all around. They're just beautiful. And so I wish we could get in that, but it was, it was beautiful. And then in the top uh, right, uh, right corner, there was a man by the name of Steve, and his room is rented out now, but what would happen was, if you went into his room, he'd lock the door on you. He'd slam the door and lock it. You couldn't get out. So there were times that it happened to me. And so you're standing on the inside, you know, knocking. Linda, the caretaker, you come let me out. Steve loved to have a company, you know, when he was alive. And so he just made sure he was, you're going to stay there with him. <laughs> Now, the two in the middle, they were just residents here. They lived here. They lost their lives here. Um, Will, the one on the very far right side, you will see him upstairs. That was his hallway. So if you take pictures and you see a lot of orbs, that's Will. He patrols that. He makes sure everybody's fine because his wife still lives up there. Okay? Now, the most famous was on the bottom there. 
In the 1970s, there was a heavyweight champion boxer by the name of Fighting Irish Pat Duncan. And after he had to remove himself from uh, the boxing career, um, actually, to be, <laughs> well, more honest, they kicked him out because he just got old. He couldn't fight anymore. He spent his last eight months here. And that's kind of sad because he was alone. His family left him. His agents left him. As long as he was making money and he was popular, everybody loved him. Once he couldn't, you know, be in the, the spotlight, they got rid of him. He is still here. I love him. I love him. Love him. He is very cool. All right. Now, um, like I was saying, originally this hotel had 206 rooms. Each room had their own window, so you kind of see how small they were. Out in the hallway here, we'll show you there is a, um, a door that has two windows in it, and it's one of the original rooms, and it's still kind of set up the way it was back then. And you can see just how small they were and how small the people were. They were tall. You were exceptionally tall, you know, for that time. How tall were you? Six one. Six one. Okay. I was probably for a man. I was average. I'm five five. I could have been maybe even considered tall. So you'll see how small those pants were. All right. Now, just we will all be walking around with you. We encourage you to take pictures. Um, use dousing rods to speak. Uh, K two meters digital recorders. Um, we'll show you down the hallway where the haunt, my haunted painting is. That's really cool. There is a spirit that I actually had to bind in the picture. What I mean by that is that it was causing a lot of trouble here in the hotel and they got a hold of me and they said, this, there's something in this painting that's hurting the residents. So what I did was I came in and said, okay, you stay right there. You can't move. Okay. But what we like to do is have people go ahead and touch it. Just, you know, touch it. It's not in a frame. Many people will feel that it's cold or warm. Jack went and felt it while he was turning the lights on this evening and... It was warm. Usually it's cold when I touch it, but it was warm tonight. It's a, like in a little museum room. Some people even get sick or like nauseated, headache, even walking into the room because they can feel the energies from that. Okay? Uh -huh. Do you keep the painting here because you do the tours here or because you don't want it to be in your home? Exactly. <laughs> they gifted that painting to me and I said I will take it only if it stays here. Because if I take it home it's going in the garage and staying there behind, you know, shelving it. <laughs> I don't want it in my home. The other question is, mm -hmm. it turns itself upside it down? It does. Well, thank you for that. You've read my, my stuff. Yeah, there's been times when we've come in here and it's upside down. Now, the only people in here are some of the residents, and they could care less about that painting. So uh, the last time we were in here, in fact, my, um, my producer, he got here before we did, so he was turning the lights on, and he turned the light on in there, and the picture was sitting by, you know, sitting there, so nice and pretty. And he went down the hallway to turn more lights, I came back and just happened to look, and it was upside down, and it was a little askew. It wasn't, you know, like straight. It was, so he says, oh my god. Well, I'm going to tell Sandy about that. So yes, it, it does all kinds of interesting things. Now what you can do too is we encourage you to walk around anywhere. Doors of places that you can go into are open. So the other, the other doors that are shut, well they've got ranchers or the, the residents <laughs> that live in them. But there's plenty of room upstairs. One at the way, way, way far end over here, we call it the tilted room because when they lifted the building, <laughs> It stayed tilted. Uh, third floor, very haunted. Okay. Um, let it, uh, we like to have our people participate too. Let us know if you feel things. You capture things on your uh, cameras, recorders. Let us know if you got touched. If you feel like somebody's following you, bring them out your neck, things like that. Okay. We like to know what's going on, and you're free to roam. Uh, the restroom is like right behind this wall. You can Go in a little hallway, it's right back here if you need it. And enjoy. Sandy, is the cat still around? The cat is always here. Uh -huh. There's a phantom cat. If you have recorders, you might get it recorded. Um, in fact, right down this hallway, they were doing, oh, this was maybe about 15 years ago, I guess. Um, they were doing some uh, remodeling up in the attic part, and they found a carcass of a cat. Aww. So we've gotten 
plenty of meows. Right out here in this uh, hallway, you'll hear a little boy calling for his mother. In room, th okay, let me see. in room three to nine, uh, you could get ectoplasm sprayed at you. That's kind of like a water. Room next to that, 309, there's a grumpy old lady. She'll slam the door on you. So we try, did you prop that open against the sink as hard yeah, as you can? Yeah, I did. Yep. Okay, yeah, because she, she doesn't like anybody and she'll kick you out of your room. <laughs> so there are women here too. There's women here? Now you were saying that Will, his wife was still here? He is still here. In fact, all of these people are still here. No, you, but you said his wife still lived here? Yeah, yes, and she's alive actually. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she's still here. Yeah. Let me see. What else? Um, we have had, let's see, if you go down this big long hallway, just right down here, we'll show you. There is a prostitute in a dirty yellow dress. Um, she doesn't show up a lot, but I've seen her quite a few times in the 10 years that we've been here. Now she, the first time I met her, she was angry. Oh my God, she was so angry. And it's like, wow, why are you so mad? She told me she was angry because someone hired her to come in and he shot her before he paid her. She still wanted her money. <laughs> So, this happened to be an elegant hotel, but there was a lot of places around here. The red light district was just right back over here. So that's what I'm thinking. She might like the hotel, thinking there might be uh, more people here than <laughs> at her uh, brothel. So, business for her. Uh, yeah. So, enjoy. And we'll get the candy spread out here. Everybody, thank you so much for all of this. It's, it's nice that you brought all this to share. Um, when it's time to go home, make sure that you, you, you grab everything, <laughs> okay? Uh -huh.
<laughs> you want me to fall down the stairs? So, <laughs> Do you want to Oh, wow. Another room? Uh, room 308. Now, this is the room Cindy says she doesn't like this one. She said there's something real dark in this room. She, yeah, she I didn't like this room either. And then the evening's most astonishing occurrence happened in room 308. Because look at it, it's you. weird. It's weird because it's, you see the mirror. Ow. Oh, are you all right? Well, what happened? I gotta get out of here. I think he's missing. Really? <laughs> oh my lord! Well, what happened? Get... Oh, I got smacked. You did? Yeah, I'm getting out of here. Holy I wasn't getting out of here fast enough. <laughs> he yeah, just, the camera guy just got slapped. Uh, oh man! That's what I haven't seen until much bigger. Really? Yeah. Yes, he did. Don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. We should be with Warren, and we didn't leave, did we? Was it the boxer? Maybe. Yeah. Look at me into my glasses. You don't catch it in the picture, but you see it. Oh, 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 Michael. I know, he smashed my glasses. Oh, my God. I thought it wasn't because your thing didn't fall on it, did it? No. It hit me. It went first for that thing. This side? Yeah. Oh, you see it? Uh -oh. Yeah, it's like a shower. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, you're shaking too. Oh, well, yeah, because I didn't yeah. get. Yeah. She was trying to, but really, oh, he's hot right there. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. He's hot. really. Oh, gee. You can tell okay. The I'll get in there and I'll. <laughs> go, go. You said straighten uh, them out. He swore at us and we didn't leave. So. But look, he bent my glasses. Oh my oh, gosh. Was that one? I'm getting out of here. <laughs> That's enough footage for me. <laughs> I had my warning. Wow. Gosh. Yeah.